One of the problems that I always have with unit tests is deciding just how much stuff to assert inside of a single test. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode we're going to talk a little bit about how much stuff do you test in a unit test. Uh, so Kind of the thing that got me started on this was that I had some code that was mapping an object to another object, and I wanted to know quickly if something was wrong in my mapping, um, but I didn't necessarily want to write like 30 tests to, to check if every field was being mapped properly. I really just wanted to know like, is this working or not? Um, but at the same time, I wanted to know like all the problems that were happening if something had changed in this mapping. Um, I wasn't entirely sure how to do that because on one hand they've got like 30 tests and 30 tests is awesome because then I get to like say, oh, I had 30 tests of the project. Um, but in the long run, that's going to slow down testing and all of that stuff. And if I have to do setup code and I have to do it in multiple places or I need to set up functions and stuff like that. And anyway, um, I wasn't entirely sure how to approach it. But then I found this interesting thing in an assertion library that I use called Fluent Assertion. Um, so let's just go and install that library. And if you haven't seen what this library looks like, uh, I think it's kind of a fun thing. So let's just go and uh, manage my NuGet packages here. And I want questions. There it is. So we'll go and install that. Um, so this adds a bunch of new assertions that are available to you. Uh, so normally you just do things like assert, which comes with whatever testing library you have. But this lets you be a little bit uh, more conversational, I guess, in the way that your tests are built. Um, so you would do like you could do something like uh, just have a string here. Uh, and then normally you do like assert hello equals something else, but uh, what I can do here is I can just should and just hit that to include it. Uh, so we'll add that to the project for the file, and we can just say things about it. So it should um, be um, this is obviously kind of a contrived example here, but when we're asserting that hello is equal to hello. Uh, and we've got live unit tests running here, so that will go and spin up and, and run that test for me. Uh, just make sure that it's actually working. So this should hopefully fail the unit tests. Uh, this just takes a second to run on my machine. There we go. Uh, so this is fluent assertions. Uh, so I have a something provider here that we can test against. Uh, so a something contains name, a height, and depth, a width, and weight, uh, as most some things do. Uh, and we just want to check that we're going to be returning the, the right stuff for this. Uh, so we would do this by doing something like um, uh, something, so such a kind of test, we're doing new something provider. Uh, yeah, so that's just not public. Let's just quickly make that public here. Yeah, accessible over here in my test. So it's something provider. And we want to make sure that when we get something, was that what it was called? Get something? Oh, provide something. Of course, as a provider would do. Uh, then we want to run some assertions on this. So we want something dot depth should be uh, see if it's greater than greater than one uh, something dot height should hundred something dot name. Uh, 
a bunch of things here. And I, I don't know what's failing here. Uh, so if you take a look at the results of this test here, um, whenever it finishes running, or there's no trick to finding it here somewhere. There we go. Uh, so the problem with his expected value to be greater than one, I found one. Uh, so that's probably this one here that's failing, but it's not clear that like if this one is failing, whether these two are failing. As soon as this one fails, then the test bombs out and we don't get to, to see what's happening. Especially if you had more than one line that said be greater than. Be yeah, really hard to so it, it's tricky. I mean, it's nice in that the live unit testing shows this stuff, but that doesn't really help me if I'm looking at test failures on the server or, or something like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an assertion scope around this. Alright, uh, so this is going to check everything inside of my assertion scope and tell me what the problems are. So we can really see that the little red X's now cover few more lines than they used to before, and if you take a look at the output here, uh, we can see that the expected value could be greater than one, but found one, and now expect the string to be something for the length of nine, but found small something for the length of 15. Uh, so everything that's failing, we now have surfaced here individually. So it's much easier to go in and fix the things that are wrong inside of our code so that they match our test. Uh, so expected to and then we expect this just to be worth something. Equalization uh, matters. And there we go. Our test is passing. Uh, so this is just a really nice way of being able to test a bunch of conditions pretty easily without having to write a bunch of different tests for each one of these things. Cool. Yeah. I've, um, I've used fluent validation before. Do you know, are these packages related? Like, is it the same author? Is it just oh, I, don't, I don't think so. It's just that they happen to be Just fluid. the concept of fluent yeah. API. Yeah, fluency. Cool. Yeah, so if, if, you, if you missed out kind of what the fluency was, it's that instead of Having to, you can basically just do these like extension methods, uh, and you can chain them together to, to come up with longer and longer things. Uh, so you can, I think you can even do like and conditions on them. Right. Uh, and so it reads more like a sentence instead yeah. of assert yeah. greater than something dot depth comma one. Right. Cool. Uh, and that's pretty much that. The usage library works with any unit testing framework, so it works with X unit, any unit, Microsoft test, anything like that. Um, there you go. Okay. Thanks. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on another episode of Speednet Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share, read blog, and all the other good things that you do. And we'll see you next time. Bye.